Hello everybody, today we're going to have a look at um, building process workflows within the MSM application. So all types of um, requests, be them incidents, service requests, changes, problems, events, etc. all need to be underpinned by their own process workflow to ensure you know, repeatable process is followed. Process workflows, um, to, uh, to build them in the solution is very simple. Many of our competitors will charge consultancy for such tasks, but uh, at Marvel Software, we like to empower our customers to do these types of tasks themselves. And it's very simple to create a process workflow. So what we'll do initially is we'll go to the part of the, part of the solution where you build these things. So under the maintenance menu, this is where, where many administrative functions are carried out, I'm going to click on request maintenance. And this is an area of the solution that's not used that often. Again, it's very much for configuration. So lots of different options here for administrators uh, to do um, configuration work under the covers. So if I go over to process workflow just here and select process workflow, this is where I can build my process workflows. Again, to underpin any type of, of a request or, or ticket as some people call them. So if we look at a few examples here, so on the left hand side, these are all the different process workflows that have already been created. So if I look at ITIL change normal, this is, a, this is an out of the box workflow that we give you as part of the solution. Um, to, uh, to underpin a, a normal change. So the change comes in as new, it gets proposed, there's approval points, rejection points, cab review, and so on and so forth. So quite a, quite a detailed um, workflow there to underpin a, a normal change. But what I'm going to do today uh, is show you how easy it is to create a new process workflow. And like with these presentation videos, we'll keep it simple, we'll keep it short and succinct. So um, I'm gonna build a new process workflow to underpin a typical incident. So the sort of incident um, where there's no specific workflow, just the st standard type um, incident workflow that could underpin any type of, a, of incident that doesn't have its own specific rules. So to, to create a new process workflow, it's very simple. I go up to here and there is a, the, the yellow or gold colored plus for new process workflow. I click on there and I've got an empty screen, which is perfect because we haven't started yet. So what I need to do is um, specify what different statuses I want within the workflow. So first and foremost, I need to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it new workflow. And the software will let you know whether that name is available or not to ensure that thing, everything is, um, is unique. So to build, start building the workflow, we click here on the right hand side of the screen to add a new status. So these statuses, I've got lots on here. This is a, a demonstration system, so lots of different statuses, but you can create these statuses yourself. So you don't have to have standard out of the box statuses. You might want to create statuses that um, yeah, are specific to what you're trying to achieve and that mean something in, 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 their, in their wording. So uh, the first status for, for an incident might be new. When the incident first comes in, it might, be, uh, it might be new. So there's our new status just there. So I'll make the screen a bit bigger. And that status is a start state. So the incident can come in into this new status when it's first logged it's there, it's in a new status. So the next status we probably would want is something called accepted. So the accepted status is when somebody reviews the incident and confirms, yep, this is a genuine incident, it's valid, and it goes through to the accepted status. And that status typically would uh, respond to the SLA response clock as well. So when the incident moves into the accepted status, at that point, typically an email or an SMS will be fired off to the, uh, the raise user to let them know that the incident has been uh, accepted and therefore the res and responded to, and the response clock has been uh, has been um, was answered essentially. So from new to accepted, um, typically the incident will go through to work in progress. So uh, find W in the alphabet, or just tap in W to, to find it for us. Work in progress. Okay, nice and simple. Pop that just there. From work in progress, typically the next status might be solved. There's our solve status, so I'll add the uh, solve status in and put it just there. From there, typically, um, incidents will probably go from solved to closed. Okay. And there's our closed status just there. So I'll put that just there. Some of our customers like the ability to reopen incidents. It's, it's a contentious subject, um, perhaps one not for this presentation, but I'll just show you it anyway, just so you can see what we can do. It's entirely up to you if you choose to have the option to reopen your incidents. So I'm gonna put that just there. And also, sometimes you might have an incident logged by a customer or user, and then that customer is non-responsive. And as a result of that, it could cause you to have an SLA breach. So if you have a fixed breach because a customer is non-responsive to your uh, attempts at communication, it's unfair to have an SLA breach as a result of that. So you can put incidents on hold as well. And what that would do is that would deduct 
um, SLA time at the end of the incident, so you're not uh, having SLA breaches for, for um, SLA time that you have no control over because your customer is not responsive. So there's our different statuses. So to build them together, very simple, click, drag and drop. So new can go through to accepted. Once accepted, the, uh, the incident would typically be assigned um, to the appropriate person if it hasn't already done so. So from accepted through to work in progress. From work in progress, it can go through to solved. And from solved, it can go through to closed. If you want, you can have the ability to, uh, to reopen. So from closed, you can go to reopened. And from reopened, you would probably go back to work in progress. Also, from work in progress, you need to be able to put the incident on hold. And also, when the customer has responded, you need to take the incident off the hold status. You need to return back to the work in progress status. And lastly, if it's a quick incident or a first time fix, it could be a password reset or something like that. From new, straight through to solved, if it's a really quick, uh, quick response, quick incident. So there we go, that's it. That um, process workflow is built. Very simple, very uh, basic to, to build these. We don't charge a consultancy. We, we provide you training to do this and you can do it yourself. So that's a very simple example of how you can build a process workflow within the MSM application. That's it for today's presentation. Um, do stay tuned on this channel for other videos. Uh, and thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.